Hi, everybody. Hey, everyone. We're Unpub, and I just want to say right off the bat that if you want to kind of have the visuals and the slides be your main screen, you should be able to do that by double clicking uh, on those slides. And we're going to talk a little bit about what, uh, what Unpub is about, which is closing the gap in education opportunity. Uh, and we're trying to do that by building a bridge. Um, but before we tell all about Unpub, we're going to illustrate the problem we're trying to solve with a little story. Exactly. This is Susan. Susan is a senior software engineer with a plethora of knowledge and experience from decades of working in her field. Not only does she have current knowledge of the innovation that's taking place around her, she also sees on a daily basis the skills and experience that is lacking both on her own team and throughout the industry. She's been trying her best to share her skills and knowledge with those around her, but is frustrated because she can only teach so many people by herself. And she knows the value of her education or of her knowledge for the education institutions and universities, as well as the industry across the whole. She sees, however, her only two options for turning her knowledge into consumable content as going down the publishing route and working with a textbook publishing into industry, but it's not feasible. She doesn't have the time or the effort and energy to put into the lengthy process of writing and editing and publishing a textbook. And on the other end, she, can, she doesn't see the online platforms as a viable option either. She doesn't want to she doesn't want to, and she doesn't know how to develop a course by herself and then put it up on a platform with where she'll have to compete with tons of different authors and self-market herself. So unfortunately, she hangs up that idea and her education or her value of her knowledge to people to be educated is lost. Yeah, and on the other side, we have Zion. Zion's a recent high school grad who's interested in mathematics and computer science, but he doesn't really know which majors he needs to take or what skills he should master to be the best job applicant he can be and what careers might actually open, be opened up to him given his interests at the end of his college career. And Zion doesn't have to be just a college student. He could be somebody post-grad or recently laid off and looking to acquire new skills to be rehired. It could be somebody who's currently in the workforce and being trained at the class level. So Zion, we just want to emphasize, could be any kind of learner. And Sam and I were Zions just a few months ago when we graduated in May. Uh, we saw firsthand at our schools and our universities the way that all these different players really make it difficult for knowledge authors to get their content to knowledge learners. And even upon graduation, the solutions to those problems didn't really exist. So the opportunity that we took right after graduation was to build this, help build this company called Unpub. And you're going to hear us talk a lot about Unpub going on from here. So I just want to make it clear what Unpub means and where that name came from. Um, Unpub really kind of gets at the notion that we share that the publishing industry kind of operates as a cartel. And it's not really a free market, let alone looking at education as a public good, which is how we kind of believe that it should be seen. So Unpub goes against all the incentives and the outcomes that the publishing industry delivers. And Sam and I is going, are going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, exactly. First, yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. Exactly. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say thank you all for attending our presentation. Um, it goes without saying that these are very unprecedented times, the fact that we're talking to each other virtually. And my name is Sam. And you just heard from Maceo and Philip is behind the camera. Uh, and like I said, just the level of adaption, adaptation everybody is going through right now with life, school and work in general is incredible. But although these times may be hard and we hope everybody is staying safe and healthy, the truth is that times of change present incredible opportunities for radical collaboration and social development yeah and yeah at the end of the day we really want to leave you guys inspired by the purposeful solutions that we're going to talk about to the problems that we explain but the solutions are going to prioritize these authors and these learners rather than the middle parties in between 
And we're all about building a bridge, a strong bridge between those authors and those learners. And we really know that that bridge also has to be flexible to the rapid pace of innovation and technological development in many industries today. Exactly. And although technology and its development have already, has already changed the way we all live our lives, like I just said, speaking virtually to everybody, uh, the pace at which it is continuously developing is creating a future that we really can't see. Uh, a future that is approaching faster than we could also ever imagine. Research shows that 65% of students who are entering primary school right now are, uh, research shows that people, uh, students who are entering primary school right now will be working for a job that does not exist yet and a career that they have no idea how to prepare for. And yet the post-secondary institutions and programs accompanied by the publishing companies who are essentially the gatekeepers of educational content into higher ed, the disconnect is profound. And the reason is because publish industries are inherently unable to stay on pace with the technological developments because they don't prioritize uh, innovative knowledge in education. A lot of our market research shows these things to be very clear and apparent. First off, just the time it takes to build a textbook is between one and five years. If an author has innovative knowledge in the moment, by the time they make a textbook and publish it, that opportunity to grasp the knowledge and share it with those who need it has passed. On top of that, the authors aren't even incentivized to put in the amount of time and effort it takes because by the end of the day when the book is done they are rewarded with a meager just eight or 12 to 18 percent royalties for the final sale of their book and increasingly that final sales price is not the final sale that a student buys but the 30 percent discount given to distributors which is profound and on top of that if a publisher or once a textbook is published, the publishing industry operates with their holier than grail edition model, which characterizes textbooks that are only on average three years old as uh, out of date. And so what do they do? They come in, slap the information around, reorganize it, maybe add a couple facts if there is new information to add and pushes it out to the universities to teach because they can't teach non new editions. And then on top of that, it forces the students to buy it, even if the information hasn't changed. If this is an example, if this doesn't exemplify the chokehold that the publishing industry has on the free flow of knowledge, then I just want you to guess how much the price of textbooks has increased for students over the last 40 years. Just take a gander. 100%, 200%, since 1978, the price of textbooks has increased 812%. That is twice the price of the housing market, the increase of the housing market, and four times the inflation of the US dollar. I don't know about you, but uh, we really don't think that's fair. And so we're trying to set out on a path that will change that. Yeah, so what we've been describing is really this huge gap between what is needed and what is provided. And this gap is rep also a barrier and that barrier is the publishing industry. And like we talked about, they're really more of a cartel than a free market. They don't believe in education as a public good and we wanna be a part of changing the economic and social structure around education. So that includes technical fields that really necessitate the adaptation to new and advanced forms of transmitting that knowledge. In fact, many students today are still really learning the same content that their parents or grandparents may have learned. And like we talked about, that's just not an efficient model to transmit that knowledge. So we want to talk really clearly about which two parties are being exploited by the publishing industry and how, they, how that exploitation actually works. So on the one hand, we have authors and SMEs. And these Authors put in a lot of hours right up front with the no real promise of future royalties in the hope of actually building out a successful series. And very few of the authors that go down this initial 
capital and human capital investment on their own part actually have their knowledge built out into successful series and that really limits the prospects for them right off of the bat and third when they actually are successful and the publishing industry decides to build out a series based on their knowledge they're actually going to have their ip ownership slashed of their own knowledge as well as royalties and revenue slash that they receive and then the learner on the other hand is going to receive the additions that come out at a pretty arbitrary pace. They don't really reflect current changes in industry knowledge, and they're going to vastly overpay for those additions rather than just paying for content that really reflects the needs of the industry. And although, sorry, sorry Macy. Uh, although these problems are absolutely profound and it's not a new realization in any way, the market itself has begun to prepare in a couple ways. And an example of that is within a recent Harvard Business Review, they it cited that almost half or 46% of CEOs who responded to a Price, Water and Cooper global survey said that the most important, important initiative for them to close the future potential skills gap is significant internal retraining and upskilling within their own workforce compared to just 18% of people who said they were comfortable, 18% of CEOs said they were comfortable hiring from outside of their industry or students coming out of the university. And on top of that, the market itself has come up with its own solution to this problem in the form of online learning companies or online learning platforms. And over the last decade, these platforms have boomed. Today, they offer tens of thousands of courses to tens of millions of users on literally any subject. But although that does help the flow and expansion of knowledge, it doesn't solidify or uh, solve the essence of the problem within education in the textbook industry. The, the problem of supporting, not supporting authors and students. Instead, these platforms prioritize just the transactional profits, which have made them incredibly wealthy. Yeah, these current solutions maintain that sense of competition rather than cooperation, and in many ways really take advantage of both learners and authors in the same way that the traditional, you know, mechanisms of delivering knowledge have. So we really believe that the solution to these problems lies in building community, and that community has to be of people who support one another and believe in making education the models of receiving education different from they are today. And that community has to build a bridge. And Sam and I really started our community a long time ago. So he's going to talk about how we first came together and how we hope to continue to build a community on that. Exactly. Our our community, Maceo and I's community, started nine or 16 long years ago in, in first grade when we attended City of Lakes Waldorf School together for the first eight years of our education. During those eight years, many important qualities were instilled in us. Uh, we're confident in our creativity, our resilience, our personal value. But most importantly, Macy and I agree that the single best aspect that we learned there was just coming away with a passionate love for learning and continuously learning. And even though we went our separate ways after eighth grade through high school and college, we have now circled back to to unpub. And not only did we remain friends and now colleagues, we had the incredible experience of uniting a lot of our communities together. And one of the members of that shared community is Philip England, who as our creative director and graphic designer is to thank for these incredible PowerPoints that you are all seeing. But so once we came back to unpub or came together as colleagues, we didn't we didn't start on pub from scratch at all. We, after graduation, came on board of Aquarian Knowledge. Aquarian Knowledge is an e-learning consulting company that was founded by the chairman of the Unpub's board of directors and my father, Danny Hoyt. Uh, when we joined AQK, Aquarian Knowledge, Danny and his team were in the midst of the sales process for a course that they had just launched called Engineering the Digital Transformation. Engineering the Digital Transformation was based off of a book by the same name. Uh, 
in written by Gary Groover for in all intensive pur intensive purposes is our friend Susan. Uh, he had 30 years of experience in software development. And however, he took his his knowledge one step further than Susan did and decided to self publish and write a book to share his knowledge. Except he soon realized that the medium of a book in and of itself was not adequate to share and have the influence he knew he could. So he met and partnered with Danny and Aquarian Knowledge's team to transform that knowledge into a three-part certification-based training program. Um, Danny not only invited us on board Aquarian Knowledge, uh, it was his work and his experience and his knowledge in general that both inspired us and supported us from the get-go to found Unpub. Danny has been our angel investor and throughout the whole journey has provided us unlimited guidance and guardrails and constant support, no matter where, when, or what we needed on. So Danny, we really wanna say thank you for all that you've done for us. Um, and before we talk about Unpub, I know that's what you're all here to here to learn about. I'll let Maceo give a quick overview about what the actual essence of EDT engineering the digital transformation course is and it'll give you a little idea of where we're going yeah so engineering the digital transformation is a software development improvement certification pipeline improvement certification that incorporates both an asynchronous learning component and project projects that are meant to put the knowledge learned in that component into practice so the white belt is going to be that asynchronous learning component meaning the student is allowed to learn that at their own pace via the e-learning platform and really pick up the knowledge in a way that works for them. Then in the green belt, the enterprise or the organization will actually implement that knowledge that's learned in the white belt. And it'll be a team or a project that is implementing that knowledge together and showing the ROI to the organization. And finally, they'll often purchase the black belt. And the black belt is really driving change across the enterprise. Um, where the green belt really only focuses on one team or one project, the black belt is teaching teachers how to teach within the organization and ultimately enabling the organization to teach this process and methodology for pipeline uh, development across the organization without uh, as relying so heavily on SNEs and coaches. Exactly. And Although we had nothing to do with the development process or initial sales process of EDT, we were truly inspired by both AQK and Gary's uh, success that they had from working together throughout the whole process. And we really viewed EDT as a catalyst from which we could build a company that truly supports all authors or Gary's or Susan's throughout the entire process of development in sales and really streamline knowledge innovation. So that's why we began Unpub and the Unpub ecosystem. One of Danny's favorite quotes that he likes to say is that true entrepreneurs take action on an idea that will boil the ocean, but smart entrepreneurs start by simply heat, heating one pot at a time. And that kind of exemplifies how we viewed EDT. We saw it as a pot and wanted to develop an entire organization that can boil the ocean and support authors and learners in general. Another way to think of our pot within the entire like expanse of education is we can't do all of school. So we don't do anything pre-K through grade 12. We can't even do all of higher ed and skills-based certifications or professional learning pathways. So we're really focused on those areas within software engineering. And EDT and Unpub are really championing the software engineering industry for our vision for this new learning platform or new learning methodology. But we are looking for champions in other industries and looking to build a community that can really support the innovation across different industries. And that boil the pot notion also is really reflected by a quote that we all agree upon and inspires us and hangs on our wall right there every day. Um, and that quote is never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. 
And that really just exemplifies our belief in small or group individual action and the power that we can all have to make real change in the world. Um, and the way that we envision having that change come about is through the Unpub ecosystem. So Unpub is our business, but the Unpub ecosystem relies on a number of different players that I'll get into in a moment. Um, and that bridge is going to benefit students on the right and authors on the left. Um, it's going to benefit the students because we're going to get rid of the inflated costs and try to help with the uncertainty that the students face about the path they're going to take. We're also going to have reliable and up-to-date or industry standard knowledge. And those learning pathways are going to be designed to fit the developments of that knowledge. And we're looking to bring all parties together. So it's going to be an unrestricted and transparent process. And we'll be happy to get into that later on. Um, but we want to provide the content that students need in a way that's continuous and they can keep referring to it if they want. They have persistent access. So there's a lot of benefits to this model. One is versioning as opposed to additioning. So we really empower the authors not only to have much higher ownership of their own IP, but then to actually drive the change in their own course so that any industry standards or industry new knowledge is reflected in that course and it's really fitting the need of the students. And that stands in contrast to the addition model that we've described where it's pretty arbitrary in terms of when they decide to come out with a new release and it doesn't necessarily reflect updates in the industry knowledge or in that field. Um, and the components that make up this Unpub ecosystem um, are really threefold. We're connecting the authors on the left with the learners on the right. And the most basic foundation of that component of the ecosystem, the most basic building block, is going to be our core partners. And our core partners consist of our financial tra transaction fintech company that we are working closely with and we're going to share a little bit more about in, in a moment. Uh, that consists of some development partners and then also the curriculum design, which we work with a lot through with Bitcoin knowledge. And then we also, as a second component of the building blocks, have kind of development partners or development specialists. So these are going to be people doing copywriting, storyboarding, or organizations doing copywriting, storyboarding, course structure, and QA, and really just helping the course content come to full development. And then the third unifying piece that isn't always necessary because sometimes uh, these courses can be transmitted B2C, but often it's gonna be B2B and the final consu customer, consumer is not the customer. And the customer is gonna be that enterprise or that education institution that purchases the content on behalf of the end user or developer. Um, and these are the, the main building blocks that really make up the bridge that connects learners to authors. Exactly. Yeah. And on top of that, when we set out to build Unpub, we didn't want to be another run of the mill for profit company. We didn't want to just be an, yeah, another fly on the wall in the ecosystem of corporate dominance or whatever. We wanted to implement our values and our beliefs in supporting the community around us and not just answering and holding ourselves accountable to shareholders, but understanding that the value in the community of stakeholders that live and are around us are equally if not more important so that's why we decided to build our organization around the purpose of changing or uh, uh, closing the gap in racial and social educational opportunities now how do we do that so big a big ask we have structured a fund are in the midst of structuring a fund from which we take a portion of every course that we sell and di divert it to a fund that we use to meet the community where it is, whether that be making and developing courses for after school programs or nonprofit communities or just writing grants. We don't really pretend to, we're not trying to pretend like we have it all figured out. We are in the early days of Unpub and that's one of the things that we need some help on. But in order to really exemplify how the whole bridge comes full circle, we need to introduce you to one of our core partners, uh, X Voucher. And the person who's gonna talk is not just an employee at X Voucher. He is an important member of our own community. He's, he came on board Maceo and I's community in first grade as well. So we've known him for a very long time. So Oliver, I know you're watching. If you could please share your screen 
and introduce yourself. Okay. Here we go. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Hi. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Sorry about that. My name is Oliver Whitleff, and as Sam alluded to, I've known these guys since literally first grade, so plenty long enough to say that there's some super diligent and talented young entrepreneurs who I am super excited to be working with. So I'm a developer, a software developer at XFactor, and XFactor is a local fintech company. Our offices are right off the side of Loring Park, and what we have implemented is an ecosystem which connects training, credentialing, and continuing ed providers on one centralized online hub. So what does that really mean, and why would we want to do that? Our industry is uh, its competitive, it's complicated, and at times it can even be just a little bit chaotic. So we have these certification bodies and education providers, which will compete with Unpub. I'm talking about giants such as CompTIA, um, tech certifications like AWS cloud certifications, Microsoft cloud certifications, right? Their language certifications, TOEFL, CELT. I could name drop this stuff for the entire, uh, the entire presentation if I wanted to, but my point is that there are a lot of them and they're really competitive. And each one of them sells through multiple channels selling to corporations, selling to NGOs, selling to universities, um, even doing B2C sales in some cases. And those people who are buying them don't only really want, uh, they don't only really want a certification from a single one, right? Uh, they don't only really want to take an AWS cert. Maybe they want to buy AWS certifications, but they also want to bundle it, for example, with the engineering, the digital transformation to give their engineers the hard skills as well as the soft skills. So, the customers are shopping across education providers. And all this is really just to say that it's very complicated. And before XVoucher, there was not a single platform, a single hub, which facilitated all of this commerce from start to finish, from the certification body creating the, the thing to a student actually using it. There was no platform which facilitated all of that commerce and and provided complete financial transparency to every single party. And that's what XFactor does. So by using XFactor, by becoming a, a key partner with XFactor, what Unpub gains access to is not only, you know, those avenues for the distribution of their products and the, and the uh, transactional transparency that they'll certainly benefit from, but they're also plugging into a thriving ecosystem. Over a million students receive some sort of content through XVoucher every single year, last year. And this year, I'm sure it'll be more, right? So Unpub, by partnering with us, they're plugging into this, this ball that's already rolling and there's already transactions flowing through and getting, uh, getting access to some key analytics and transparency. So let's talk more concretely about exactly how all that works. So at the top, you can see we have uh, the system, it, it's role-based, it's based off of abilities, the types of things different types of organizations can do, and the roles are down the right. So you can see um, Unpub is acting primarily as a sponsor. They have a centralized hub where they can have the power to create products, brand them how they wish, sell them, and track their utilization and even go so far as use some advanced features like we have a feature called learning credits that will allow Unpub in the future to create their own type of currency, which can be used to buy and sell their items uh, at discount. That's just one example of sponsored feature, right? They have access to a lot of features, but they're selling across multiple channels. Um, so what they can do at the channel level is leverage a multi-distribution model they can also brand at that level if they wished, right? They might, depending on when they're selling to government, it might be one flight branded derivative, a different for, you know, a private companies. They uh, also, we can set up dynamic marketplaces for them. So if you've ever gone to Amazon and seen a specific seller's page, it's branded to them and it shows all of their inventory just on one Amazon page. XFactor does the exact same thing, except for learning products. 
So Unpub can have a marketplaces set up that allow them to really specifically sell and cater uh, through their different channels to different customers. The customer in X-Factor is the person who buys the product and distributes it down. Right now, we're talking about B2B, right? A customer, uh, some sort of an organization buying these products, uh, eventually through Unpub, through x and distributing them down, although we do support B2C as well, right? The customer buys it, they assign it down to candidates who ultimately use it, and they use it through our supplier network. I think that's kind of a, an important key. The supplier is the person who actually delivers the content. It's a publisher, maybe, probably not in Unpub's case, right? It's, a, it's an LMS, right, such as Moodle, Blackboard, Canvas. Those are examples of LMSs. Um, but it's a really key thing that Xpatcher is not um, actually providing experience for the students have the content at their fingertips. We're just providing them access. We make sure the right people are delivered the right content at the right time and provide true uh, transactional transparency all the way up. So another way to think of it is, the products kind of flow down the pyramid and reporting flows straight back up to the top in a way that really wasn't possible in our industry before x -Voucher. So that's concluding, that's concluding my presentation, but I hope it's pretty clear how, um, how Unpub is gonna be able to utilize this platform to guarantee their highest level of success. And I'm really excited uh, that x is a partner of Unpub. They are certainly disrupting the way that educational content is created and the way we think about the relationship between student and you know education provider, not talking about your professor, talking about the person who wrote the textbook, that original subject matter expert. Meanwhile, they're disrupting that. x -Factor has been disrupting the way this content is distributed, tracked, and accessed um, since 2012. So our model is, is tried and tested, and I think it's going to be a really beautiful, really beautiful marriage with Unpubs. We're excited. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Oliver. Thank you, Oliver. So yeah, as you can see, Xvoucher has incredible capabilities, and it really by partnering with them, it takes Unpub's development process of meeting an author where they are, creating knowledge, providing continuous services for updating, and then it also incorporates an entire sales ecosystem through distribution of that knowledge. And while all, while X Voucher and Oliver do work with a ton of large industries, what Unpub's essential goal is, is to meet the individuals, the small organizations, they are doing the groundwork of innovation and develop that content and continuously update that content on a much faster pace. Compared to the large corporations, they, takes time and I mean we've gone all over those problems but in essence it brings Susan and Zion together with a bridge and in closing I want to end with a or I want to summarize a little bit with a quote by Benjamin Franklin he says there are three types of people in this world those who are immovable people who don't get it or don't want to do anything about it, then there are people who move, people who make things, people who, uh, there are people who are movable, people who see the need for change and are prepared to listen to it. And then there are people who move, people who make things happen. And that's what we're setting out to do is build a community of people who are inspired and tired of the standards of education that we're, we've been conformed to and want to see a future where knowledge is considered a public good and the flow and continuous versioning of knowledge is a natural cause of action. Yeah, we need to build a community of people who make things happen. Uh, in our first few months trying to help manage this business, we came across a lot of problems, a lot of difficulties, and it's a big problem we're trying to tackle. We know we can't do it alone. So one big area that we know we need some help is solidifying our operating agreement and our other contracts and just really making sure we have our legal house in order. Uh, this is something we don't have a lot of experience with and we're just looking for people to help build that community and make this as strong as it can be. Um, another area we know we need to help to be really successful is in developing the right pricing models, making sure that we're 
pressing for sustainable growth and in a way that's, you know, it's the right price. We're not overcharging for what we have. And third, we really need to make sure that, I think as Sam mentioned, our purpose is really fun founded in this fund as well. And that's one way we're really demonstrating our purpose is this fund to be that change. And we want to make sure we have solid and transparent governance of that fund. Ex Stature is going to be a really big help with that. But we know we need people with industry expertise to really make sure that the that fund aspect of our organization runs just as well as any other part of the organization. And then finally, if you're a SME, if you're an author and you have some knowledge that you really believe you could share, we think we have the right model for you to come and share it with us. And you're gonna benefit, the learner is gonna benefit and just come be a part of our community, come help us build this thing. Exactly. And if you have any questions, if you're inspired or interested in learning more about our idea, the specifics of our operations, our current and future agreements that we have in the works, or would just like to network and talk, please, please reach out. Um, thank you all for taking the time. I know that online presentations may not be the most uh, interactive thing but it's the day and age we are so i want to thank everybody for taking the time to do this um we have yeah if anybody has any questions there's a there's a slide or the comment side on the chat side um please throw them in there and we'd love to love to answer it as best we can And I mean, just as we said, it's it is a it is a community of, of building blocks, and we've been doing this for the last four months, and it's been a incredible experience. And we're honored to be part of Twin Cities Startup Week, Ed Tech Track. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn or check out our our email and shoot us an email, and we'd love to set up a meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Should we give it one more minute for, oh, what are some current milestones? Some current milestones. Well, we don't really want to disclose the, the buyers of EDT fully, but we have been in some, have some very productive conversations and even further than that to help drive change in industry levels or in, throughout the industry. And we have a number of very interested and eager authors and SMEs and knowledgeable professionals who are looking to us to develop their knowledge and enter into our ecosystem. But like we said, we are in the first very start of our startup and it's taking a little bit of time. And that's one of the reasons we're here is to just share our information, share our story and our our goals. What are your buyers interested in? For specific yeah, for? Um, I mean, the buyers, like we said, we're kind of trying to build those pathways from higher ed to the enterprise level. So some of them may be big, uh, like IT departments of Fortune 500 companies or even smaller companies, anyone who's really looking to improve their software development uh, pipeline efficiencies. And then also higher ed, uh, two years kind of skills based uh, education programs, anybody who's preparing people for the software development industry, we're really just trying to help funnel that, um, funnel the best talent into that industry and also have them be as prepared as they can be both in the soft skills and the hard skills. And we know particularly the soft skills is an area that uh, industry experts believe is lagging for a lot of the uh, software developers that really that come in maybe with really good technical skills, but not so much with the software development uh, process kind of methodology understanding. Thanks, guys. And SMEs, like I said, or like I think we mentioned, we're really, I mean, we're focused right now on software or kind of in software engineering, and but we absolutely believe there's an opportunity with Unpub to tap into a number of other industries. And we have a couple of other um, industries that we have people that we're working with that are kind of halfway through getting into the into the Unpub ecosystem. 
but uh, software development is the one that we are currently actively yeah. selling. And, and we're absolutely hoping to build that up. In addition to that, yeah, the on top of just entering or streamlining the develop or the courses that we develop into our unpub or our unpub ecosystem through X Voucher, we also have a number of independent companies that may not have access to the large network of of customers that X Voucher provides, and so qualified uh, organizations with quality content and training and courses are we're also in communication with a lot of those to come into our unpub ecosystem as well. And one of the things that we didn't touch on fully with um, X Voucher was that one of the be benefits of X Voucher is any course that is within our unpub ecosystem can be bundled and sold as a package to a, a customer. So if we develop or when we develop a data analytics course, um, maybe if a customer is looking for both software development and data analytics, those two aspects can be combined and sold as one package. And it doesn't matter who created what, uh, as long as that's part of our, our agreement, our reseller and channel agreement is that everything can be bundled together. Um, are you enjoying engaged in fundraising efforts and deeply to launch the business? Um, we have, yes, we've been focusing on our, our presentation for the last week or so and uh, our fundraising and Kickstarter is the next, the next thing on our list. And so if you're interested in keeping up to date with when that will all happen, uh, please follow us on LinkedIn at Unpub. And yes, we, we are definitely doing fundraising. Um, it's just coming around the corner. So yeah. get out. This is kind of tech books. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, if there aren't any more questions, uh, thanks everyone. Thank you so much all for attending. Yeah. And really our info at unpub.com. Right there. Unpub Global. Yeah. The LinkedIn's more up. Yeah. Right awesome. All right. Bye. See you guys.